Hey guys, welcome back. We're in week three of our February lessons, which is all about kindness. And remember that's showing people how valuable, how valuable they are by how you treat them. I just wanted to kind of share a story about something that happened to me. Um, the other day I was going to pick up a smoothie for my best friend. She has been home a lot lately and I wanted to get her something special for her birthday. She loves Smoothie King, so we went to Smoothie King and I got her these smoothies. And I decided to get one for myself. Um, and the lady at the behind the glass was like, oh, we had a little bit extra, so she gave it to me. An extra little cup that I did not pay for, um, I did not ask for, but she had it and she gave it to me. And that's kind of just one very, very small way of going the extra mile, of going beyond what we need to do or what even is being asked of us to show how much we care about the person on the other side. Um, so let's go ahead and check out today's story that has to do with going the extra mile. And then we'll be back here, we'll do our memory verse, we'll discuss today's bottom line, and we'll pray together. I'll see you in a second.
Hello, super fans. My name is Haley, and if you're like me, you love all kinds of sports, and you love cheering on your favorite people. And you do this because you really love kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. One thing I've learned as a super fan is that kindness isn't the same for everyone. You have to use different kinds of cheering for different kinds of people. For instance, you don't wanna use your air horn at the golf tournament. Uh, I learned that one the hard way. You have to cheer one way for a baseball team. Yeah. Yeah. Another way for tennis. And then soccer. <laughs> a lot of different ways to show kindness. So if you wanna show someone they're valuable, you can cheer for them, or like you'll see in today's story, you can give a little extra. I better get ready to cheer on the Bible story. Ah yes, good Bible story. Very well done, very well done. <laughs> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 41. Jesus was rocking the world. Everywhere he traveled, he told about the good news of God's kingdom. He called people to turn away from the wrong things they had done, and he healed sick people. Great crowds began to follow Jesus. So one day, he went up on a mountainside and sat down to share with them how God wants us to live. Blessed are those who are humble, they will be given the earth. God created us. He knows that we were designed to find joy and be at peace when we follow His ways, when we see and treat others the way God does. So, right in the middle of what's often called the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said this. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Okay. What? <laughs> to our ears, this probably sounds like a word problem, or maybe like our PE teacher telling us to go run laps. But the people listening to Jesus knew exactly what he meant. They all lived under the rule of the Caesar in Rome. The Romans had conquered many, many territories. Judea had become a little backwater province of the Roman Empire, and Roman soldiers were sent to keep order. Jesus and all the people he taught lived under Roman rule, and they had to obey the law of Rome, including this one. I decree that any Roman soldier may force a Jew to carry his pack for precisely one mile. If you're thinking, what's the big deal? Think again. Being a Roman soldier was not for wimps. Sometimes the packs they carried weighed as much as 100 pounds. It took real grit and stamina to march for miles carrying that much gear. So it wasn't unusual for a soldier to call on some random person along the road to haul their pack for one mile or about a thousand steps. And if that person says no, well, it was considered an act of rebellion against the empire. Now, imagine you're an everyday, ordinary average Joe or Joseph. You're hiking along the road Maybe you're on your way to Jerusalem. When you look up and in the distance, you see a Roman soldier heading your way. I don't know about you, but I think I'd turn right around and head back the other way. Or get off the road and head into a grove of olive trees. Or maybe just avoid eye contact at all costs. But maybe none of that works. The soldier stops, calls you out, and you have no choice but to look up. The soldier orders you to take his heavy pack and haul it along for a whole mile. You can't fight the empire. 
So, you pick up the pack. And it's forward march. You're probably counting your steps the whole way. 58, 59, just waiting until you can drop that pack. 681, 682, holding out until you can get away from this soldier that sees you as scum. 998, 999, 1000. <gasps> That's it, you're free. Roman law says that that soldier can't make you go more than one mile. So you can toss that pack like it's hot and run on home. <laughs> Except, Jesus says something else. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. You had to carry that pack the first mile. You didn't have a choice. But now, you get to choose. And if you choose to take that pack another mile, it says a lot. It says, I matter. I'm valuable just like you, and I can make my own choices. But it also says you matter. This is a really heavy load you have to carry. And I'm gonna help you not because I have to, but because I choose to. Go the extra mile doesn't just mean go big or go home. Going the extra mile means that you make a choice to help someone, to be kind. You choose an action that says, I'm doing this for you because I want to, not because I have to. And I'm doing this because you are made in the image of God. And that makes you valuable to Him and to me. So, you may not live in an empire, but you can still go the extra mile. Jesus' disciple, Matthew, wrote down one of Jesus' most famous sermons, sometimes called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught so many things about kindness, like... Let your light shine so others can see it! Do not judge other people. Love your enemy! And Jesus also said this, suppose someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with them. That's where we get the phrase, go the extra mile. Huh. Nowadays, people probably aren't forcing you to go a mile, but the idea of what Jesus was saying still works. Going the extra mile means being kinder than you have to be. It means making your bed like you're told and cleaning the rest of your room even if you aren't told. Sometimes it means doing something you know you should before you're told and with a good attitude, but you don't do it for the applause. You go the extra mile because when you follow Jesus, you should be pointing people to him. People can see how much Jesus loves them through the kindness that you show. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be kinder than you have to be. Show people kindness even when they may not earn it. Give them a little extra kindness they don't see coming. You can be their super fan. <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Woo. Right, guys I just want to go into actually God's Word to recap again what we just were our whole story today so we're gonna to go to Matthew 5 verse 41 and it says here sorry and okay and if anyone forces you to go one mile go with him two miles I just want you guys to pay attention to this one more time and if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. So God, our authority, is telling you 
that when you encounter somebody in your life that's an authority and they are expecting something of you it doesn't even have to be asked of you they're expecting something like you like your parents telling you to clean your room god would love to see you and i'm sure your parents would as well go the extra mile go above and beyond what they'd expect from you go take that extra step that they never even expected asked for just be gracious with that showing the bottom line today is showing people that you want to be kind to them the bottom line today is going the extra mile the actual bottom line today is making sure that you're being kinder than you need to be so let's go ahead and do our memory verse on that note all right you ready we'll do it together and then we'll do it together again because it's been a whole week since we've done it together so let's do this you are god's chosen people you are holy and dearly loved so put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes don't be proud be gentle and patient colossians 3 12. all right one more time you god's chosen people you are holy and dearly loved so put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Colossians 3.12. Great job, guys. All right, let's go ahead and pray together. And then I can't wait to see you back next week. Dear God, thank you for always being kinder than you have to be. You gave us the ultimate example of kindness when you sent Jesus to be our Savior. Help us follow your lead and show kindness to others. Even when it's hard, even when we don't want to, help us be kinder than we have to be. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. See you guys.